嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟嘟，嘣嘣嘣叽，嘟嘣嘣嘣叽。And that's our new bumper music here at Ransom Talk. <laughs> We want to thank、uh, Gary Luce and the、uh, Pomona Casuals for that tune. Nice.、Uh, welcome to the Ransom Heart Podcast.、Uh, this is Craig McConnell, and、uh, today's a treat because I'm sitting with both John and Stacy Eldridge as we begin a, a series、um, this season on marriage and.、Uh, Both John and Stacy just finished、uh, writing a book that will be out this December fifteenth called "Love and War: Finding the Marriage You Always Desired, Dreamed of, Dreamed of." <laughs> Stacy, John, good to see you guys. My gosh, a book on marriage! What was that like?、Uh, writing a book together as a couple. On marriage, I think the first question that strikes me is, "What possessed you? <laughs> <laughs> Why would anyone in their right mind do that?" I mean, can you imagine doing this with your spouse? I mean, sure, writing a book—you know—that's a fun thing usually to do. It's a lot of work, but oh my goodness, to open up marriage with your spouse and、uh-huh. write a book together. Yeah. Yeah. We were compelled to do it. It wasn't a dream of ours. We didn't think that we wanted to do that someday, but we really felt invited by God, and then compelled that He really wanted us to do it. So、um, we prayed long and hard about it, and then just you know, what does He want us to say? There's、mm-hmm. a lot of books on marriage out there, and we thought, good grief, we, we really need another one, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the truth is. The message in this book isn't、mm. out there,、mm-hmm. and it was a challenge to write together. I love working with John. I love、um, the closeness and the creativity and just being engaged. But man, it stirred up a lot in our own marriage.、Mm. I remember after one evening looking at each other and saying, "This is why we didn't want to do it." <laughs> right, right. Plus, my goodness, who wants to put their marriage in the crosshairs?、Mm. But we really did feel like captivating has restored the hearts of a lot of women,、mm. pretty profoundly. And while at heart, restored the hearts of a lot of men. And then the other books have done a lot to help people in their personal walk with God. And I think that those two books have have helped people in their marriages as well. But we realize that.、Um, When you get your heart back as a man or as a woman,、mm-hmm. and freedom and life and a new experience of God and the category of warfare, and you, wow, you begin to live with a much fuller sense of the kingdom of God. I'm living in the kingdom of God. The next thing you encounter, the next closest circle out,、yeah. you know, is the person you're living with. And so,、um, yeah, compulsion of God. It also made sense, and it felt like we could do do some good. Uh huh. Yeah. What was in writing this book for you two? I mean, how did God show up, or what did He do with with you as individuals, or as a couple, as you were taking on this project? Oh, that's such a good question, Craig. I was just thinking this morning of how.、Um You know, all of our lives, we're growing as people.、Mm. The sanctifying process, the journey of restoration, and it's true about your marriages too. John and I've been married for twenty six years, and we've we've come through some hard things. But I I love that we're not done.、Mm. And so, you know, even for us, it stirred up some areas that oh, I really want to get better here in <laughs> this place and. And and I love that because that's possible in Christ. There's always going to be more.、Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, Craig! So many things I want to say.、Um, I think it rescued me、mm. in this regard. That、um, I'm going to cheat ahead to the second chapter of the book. We talk about having a vision. Where does marriage fit in the larger story and in the kingdom of God? And and I sort of make a confession in the second chapter. I say, Wow, look,、uh, the Bible begins with a marriage.、Mm-hmm. Adam and Eve, a man and a woman, given to each other at the dawn of time. You know, it's not like so many of the movies we love or the stories we love. You know, a lone hero. You know, 
standing against mm-hmm. the tide of the world. It's a couple. And then you flip to the end. And at the end of the book of Revelation, there's a wedding feast, right? There's another marriage. It's the lamb and his bride, right? And marriage ushers in the age of man in Genesis. And then marriage ushers in the kingdom of God in its fullness at the end of Revelation. I sort of went, holy cow, it's got a bigger role than I thought it did. Hmm. How do you mean it rescued you? Well, just that, bringing it back to a higher priority for me, bringing it back to a, you know, I think we live with a very strong sense of mission. We love what we do at Ransomed Heart. We love the retreats and the conferences, Mm -hmm. you know, all of it. We love what we do. I think we live with a strong sense of mission, but the idea that your marriage has a mission, that Mm -hmm. Marriage plays an exalted role in the kingdom of God. I had slipped my attention. Mm -hmm. It had Mm -hmm. slipped to third, fourth, you know, and when things are going well, obviously when things are not going well, you know, it's back up to to arrest your attention. But when things are going well, it feels like other things sneak in either through crisis or something and busyness. And so it rescued, I think, me in a sense of, hey, John. (laughs) <laughs> you need to recover, deep and grow, mature vision for marriage personally mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. for our marriage. So that that among many things that mm-hmm. we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. John, Stacy, you you both have um, worked with so many couples and people over the years. What do most people hold marriage to be? What is most people's view of marriage or understanding of marriage that you've come to see and you address in your book? You know, right off the bat, Craig, I would say that um, most people think that the goal of marriage is to make them happy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it's true that sharing life with a companion, with a spouse, does enrich your life. There are benefits to it. And at the same time as iron sharpening iron, living in the proximity of, of someone else's stuff day in and day out, that if your primary goal of your marriage is to be happy or even to make them happy, mm-hmm. then you're you're really in for a shock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think it starts there. You know, we get married because we think we'll be happier, you know. Uh-huh. That's how God gets us into it. But I think it devolves for most people into a cordial detente, a sort of DMZ, you know, a two disappointed people negotiating for better terms through a DMZ that they call marriage. Hmm. I think And all the people that we've talked to, counseled, um, neighbors, friends, things that we observe, I mean, really good marriages are rare. Mm -hmm. Like there's a settling, right? Big time. Mm -hmm. Big time. So we're going to be talking about marriage in this series for a season. And where do you start? What needs to be said first off? Let me jump in with a quick word to our single Listeners, uh, folks that that uh, receive our podcast who are not in marriage right now, um, maybe don't desire to be in a marriage as well. But you will get a ton out of this. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, don't tune out, check out, feel like, oh, great. You know, they're going to talk about marriage for some podcasts here. Um, the things we're talking about are so deep in the human heart, longing, desire, transformation, what's God up to, the mm-hmm. battle for our hearts. I think all of this will will actually be really helpful. Having said that, Han, where would you start? The fascinating thing about marriage, you really have to start a years earlier. <laughs> In the life of the little girl and the little boy, you know, who will one day fall in love and and the story of what they bring into the marriage. Because honestly, I was clueless. Just the, you know, personal growth, self-discovery. I was young. John was young. I was giving him the opportunity to love me. Yay. (laughs) I was 23. 
Yeah, and I was 24. She was 24. We both came out of homes with ambivalent marriages. Uh Right, right. And I think that I was shocked with how quickly it was hard. Hmm. Even, you know, loving John, I knew him for a long time. I knew him for what? Four, five years before we started dating. We were friends in high school and through college and then dated for three years before we got married. So we were rising stars, right? We were both involved in Christian ministry and really a golden horizon. And it wasn't very long into our marriage that we hit really rough waters. And I think that that's kind of the first big shock of marriage is that it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's harder than I thought. Not only is this the first big shock, but it continues to catch us off guard, us married couples who have a few decades now, you yes. know, we've got some years, uh, we've traveled some miles together, even still, yes, it catches you off guard. Why, why is it so, why are we, why is this so hard? When you're newly married, you think, oh my gosh, I've made a tragic mistake, yeah. right? I've married the wrong person. Yes. I, you know, was God in this? I, the hardness comes as such a surprise. And I think, I think it continues to come as a surprise. Yeah. And I think what you know, we want to say right off the bat is that that's normal. Right. Uh-huh. You know, it's not necessarily your honeymoon is hard or your first year of marriage is, you know, maybe it's fantastic. However, there comes a time in every marriage sooner or later and usually sooner than later that it does. You do hit um, – hit a place where you, you're you looking at the other person going, who are you? Mm-hmm. What have I mm-hmm. done? And and I love that you confess that there are those moments, you know, it, it is a journey. We're not done. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the hardness also comes as an embarrassment to people. I think we're embarrassed, right? Right. We feel like Oh my gosh, it's us. You know, we we missed the class on marital happiness and now we're flunking the whole course, you know. Yeah. What I think Lori and I find is um, I have a hard time saying that it's really rich and good and hard. It feels like right. it feels like it has to be one or the other and we don't want to say yeah. that it's hard. We want to say it's good, mm-hmm. but but the truth is it is hard. Yep. Both and. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's rich and good and hard. And and because it's hard, because it's hard, I'm just kind of put it out there. It's not just you. It's everybody. Because it's hard, one of the things that we introduce early in the book, chapter one, is therefore you have to recover desire. Mm. You've got to recover desire. Mm-hmm. Well, what is it that you wanted? Mm-hmm. What, what is it that you want now? Yeah. You know, what? what did you dream of? What... Recovering desire for your marriage just feels like crucial to overcome the resignation, the mm-hmm. settling. Mm-hmm. I guess this is as good as it's going to get. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll settle for detente. I'll settle for a peace accord. I'll say, you know, mm-hmm. versus no, I, I want to recover desire mm-hmm. so that desire can propel us through something hard to something rich. Mm -hmm. That's so good because when you you say, yes, remember what you desired and risk desiring it again, it turns your heart back to your spouse. Mm -hmm. It awakens hope again Mm -hmm. and just coming alive into places that maybe are not necessarily dead but neglected. Mm -hmm. Just so it's so important to Mm -hmm. just to stop and say, wait, what did I want? And let your thoughts and your heart go there for a while. Is it simply that, John and Stacy, for those listening to just take some time, set aside, and just ask, what do I desire? Mm-hmm. What did I once desire? Mm-hmm. Is there any other guidance or thought there? Oh, I think that um, go to the movies you love. Go to the things that stir your heart. There are mm-hmm. scenes. There are images. I didn't like the movie, I didn't like the plot because of the affair, but the movie The Horse Whisperer has this extraordinary scene in it for me where Mm. a man and a woman, it's like Adam and Eve, it's like archetypes, you know, they're riding on horseback through the Montana Mm. ranch land and 
for me, that is the most romantic scene because they're sharing an adventure together and it stirred me. I need to go back to the things that stirred me and go, I want that. Mm. I still want that. Mm. Why do I settle for, you know, and because it, it, yeah, I think with desire comes hope. So yes, Lewis says you can only hope for what you desire. You guys, um, how do I bring this in? So much to say, so many great yeah, places yeah. to go. Yeah. Wait, for winding this one down, and I want to just, you know, along with recovering desire, it is the hope and that we want couples to know, to take a deep breath and know that it can be done and that your marriage is worth fighting for. There mm-hmm. is hope. Yeah. We contrast two stories in the, the beginning of the book, and one is Stacy and I discussing divorce not even three years into marriage, and then the celebration of our 25th wedding anniversary and what our sons had to say about our marriage. And there's hope. There's resurrection. There's life. The gospel is true. Look forward to hearing more about what God's doing in your lives and your marriage and, and what you have to offer us. We have so much to share. We're really excited about starting this series. So, um, Thank you. Thanks for joining us on this podcast. We do have some great things that are coming up, and one is the release of Love and War comes December 15th, but you can pre-order it on Amazon or any of those e-tailers right now. And then uh, in January and February, we're going to be doing a tour as well, and so we'll be telling you a little bit more about that, but we're going to hit the road again and like I did last year and, and go across the country and that'll be a really rich thing as well. So um, thanks for listening in and for more on this, come to RansomedHeart.com and uh, pretty soon I think it'll be live as loveandwar.net. So we look forward to uh, sharing more with you.